yeah, I'm so happy to, to get a win. And physically, the wrist is okay, everything else is okay? Um, they're manageable, same thing from last year, but at the moment, they're, they're okay. Let's play a game, shall we? Imagine the unexpected plot twists of Game of Thrones, sprinkle in the thrill of a Wimbledon final, and voila, you have the riveting tale of Britain's tennis sensation, Emma Raducanu. But now, the plot thickens. Yeah. Grab your popcorn as we plunge into the tennis rabbit hole of twists, turns and triple surgeries to discover what's next for Emma Raducanu. But before we jump in, do you know what Emma's guilty pleasure is? Stay until the end to find out. And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, follow that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy tennis content like this. More than 90% of you amazing spectators aren't subscribed yet, so give it a click and let's get you on our tennis-loving team. Welcome to the Raducanu coaching carousel, changing direction faster than a Djokovic return. Imagine going through five baristas in two years. One might say you're somewhat fussy, right? Well, Raducanu has just severed ties with her fifth coach, Sebastian Sachs, in under two years. No room for decaf in this tennis world, it seems. It's that shot beautifully, no panic, just a control roll. Now, Sachs isn't just another Joe in the world of tennis. He's the maestro who orchestrated Belinda Bensick's golden performance at the 2021 Olympics. But alas, it seems his symphony with Raducanu hit a sour note, and here we are left wondering, who's next on the podium? Just when you thought the coach conundrum was enough drama for one tennis career, a wild card is thrown our way, Raducanu's health. If it were a tennis match, we'd say the score was Raducanu 0, triple surgery 3. Yes, you heard it right, wrists and ankle folks. It's a medical timeout that's left the tennis world holding its collective breath. Here's the harsh reality. Our US Open champ is on a forced vacation. No clay dust at the French Open. No grass stains at Wimbledon. In tennis terms, it's like watching a Grand Slam without the roaring crowd or the nail-biting tie breaks. Rather a letdown, isn't it? From Grand Slam hero to world number 107, it's a ranking slide that would even make a skier nervous. The world of tennis is a steep climb, and it seems Raducanu has slipped a few rungs on this ladder. The challenge now is clinging on with a protected ranking and wild cards. If tennis was poker, you'd say she she was playing with a risky hand. Raducanu making no mistake. Amidst the turmoil, there's a glimmer on the horizon. Raducanu's planning a trip to the Hangzhou International Tennis Masters. But before you set your alarms for match time, hold your horses. While she'll hobnob with tennis legends and promising Chinese talents, it's highly unlikely she'll don her competitive hat. It's more of a networking event than a Grand Slam, folks. In the midst of this saga, we hear a hopeful note from Tim Henman. The former British tennis star believes Raducanu should seize this break to establish a firm foundation and scout for a long-term coach. His advice? Don't rush back. It's like serving at match point. You wouldn't want to double fault, would you? John McEnroe, the tennis legend known for his infamous outbursts as much as his unstoppable backhand, has a theory. Now wielding words instead of rackets in his ESPN Plus docuseries McEnroe's Places, he's turned his keen analytical gaze towards Raducanu's career. McEnroe mused in a recent conversation with the US Sun, I'm sure if you ask her at the end of her career, would you rather have won one major or not? None. She would rather win one. A seemingly simple statement, yet it carries the weight of experience and wisdom. It's like asking if you'd rather win the lottery or find a penny on the street. But here's the twist. McEnroe thinks there might be merit in slowing down the journey to the top, like enjoying a leisurely rally instead of rushing to smash an ace. He believes if Raducanu had experienced life as a student athlete before diving headfirst into professional tennis, she might have been better equipped to handle her current challenges. Why? 
Well, according to McEnroe, college offers young athletes the time to grow up, to mature, and to brace themselves for the whirlwind world of professional sports. McEnroe's perspective offers an interesting angle to Raducanu's journey. From her own admissions, she's felt the overwhelming pace of change. Winning the US Open at 18 was like a meteoric rise, where one day you're an aspiring player, and the next, you're the reigning champion. She admitted once, sometimes I just wish for it all to slow down for a second to catch my breath. There's a palpable longing in her words, a desire for time and space to process the magnitude of her success. Is there a sliver of regret? A fleeting wish to turn back time? We can only speculate, but it does lend some weight to McEnroe's theory. Maybe college, with its balance of academia and sport, could have provided the breather she sometimes yearns for. For now though, Raducanu's got a championship to defend, and whether it's with a textbook or a tennis racket in hand, we're all eager to see her next move. From the $2.5 million winner's check to countless endorsements, her world turned topsy-turvy, fast than a super tie break. So where does Raducanu go from here? Will she find a coach who isn't just another number? Will she make a triumphant return, leaving her trials in the dust? Or could a shift in strategy be on the cards? While she recovers from her surgeries and hunts for coach number six, the tennis world waits with bated breath. The next chapter of the Raducanu saga is yet to be written. Sure, Raducanu's path looks more like a mountain trek than a leisurely walk in the park. Her journey is shaping up to be an epic five-setter, teeming with unforced errors and thrilling comebacks. But as any tennis fan knows, it's not over until the umpire announces game, set, match. So, Emma Raducanu, we say take your time, gather your strength, choose your coach wisely. Remember, in the game of tennis, endurance is king. And to you, Glam Slam tennis fans, we say stay tuned. This roller coaster ride is far from over. Did you guess Emma's guilty pleasure? Well, she recently dished out her top training tip with the LTA, and it's not what you'd think. Forget the grueling drills or the punishing sprints, instead it's the power of a dynamic duo, dark chocolate and peanut butter. Who knew, right? I could eat peanut butter with everything, she confessed. Well folks, we've discovered the secret sauce behind those epic backhands. Now, for those of you picturing our heroine celebrating her victories with a champagne shower, you're as off target as a tennis ball hit by a squirrel. I'm not really a drinker, Emma admits, brushing away the bubbly like a pesky fly on court. Makes sense. Why settle for a headache when you can have a sugar rush, eh? And as for her favorite dish, Forget the cliched strawberries and cream. It's the sizzling Korean barbecue that's captured our champ's heart. And here we were thinking she's all about the grunts and ground strokes. Don't always expect to see her clicking selfies at tourist hotspots though. Emma sometimes enjoys being more elusive than a Wimbledon ticket, tucked away in her room with only her trusty Uber Eats for company. Now there's an exclusive club we'd all like a membership to. So what do you think? Can Raducani rise from the ashes? Played from Radicanu. Who's up next in the coaching carousel? Are you ready for the next instalment in the Raducanu epic? We sure are. See you on the court. And that, my friends, is game, set, and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of the action and what we have in store. Until next time, stay fabulous and ace those serves.